For our second welterweight clash of the evening, it's Lee the Leech, Jing Liang, and he takes on Tony the Jedi, Rossini. So both of these fighters are young men, tall men, and pretty even by the looks of the tail of the tape. Yeah, Li Jingliang just a bit taller. Everything else, identical. So the second welterweight clash of the evening. Li Jingliang, the leech from China, takes on Tony, the Jedi Rossini from Australia. Italian heritage, obviously, from Rossini, but with an Australian flag on his shorts. Oh, big flying kick. Oh, it's Li with the takedown. Locking up, locking up the guillotine. Yeah, can't get the leverage on Rossini. He wants to finish this guillotine. He's smart to jump guard right here. Yeah, there's a, there's a real risk that Rossini can pick him up here. Now he's going to jump up. Oh no, big takedown. The full weight there, 170 pounds on Lee. He's a resilient fighter though, Lee, 10 and two. Has a background in Sander, this Chinese martial art. A lot of our viewers might not know much about Sander as Rossini. Gets his back, and this is one of his specialties here, Rossini. He's well known for his rear naked choke. This position, I feel, definitely Rossini's got the advantage. Taking the back, got both hooks in, working the choke. Doesn't look good for Lee. He needs to make a move. Nah, that choke's not in. That, that choke's not in. It's a distraction, but it's not going to submit him. Now it looks bad. Leverages the weight, uses the ropes to his advantage here, Rossini. What goes through your mind when somebody's got your back like this, Vaughn, as a fighter? Well, definitely it's not the position you, you strive to be in. It's definitely difficult. Oh, it does not look good for Lee. Lee grimacing with pain here. He's really got to get his hands up. He's got to, I want to see him use his right hand to defend the choke more. Yeah. At the moment. He gets the... He gets Rossini's first hand off, but he needs to get rid of that choking arm if he wants a fresh, a breath of fresh air. Rossini with a 6-2-1 record, and he submitted a few opponents in his time with this RNC. Oh, Lee's managed to survive that. But he's not in the clear yet. Rossini still got both hooks in, controlling well from the back position. I really think Lee's got to be more explosive in this position. He seems way too relaxed. Yeah, maybe the shock of getting slammed to that hard ring took its effect as well. From the Xinjiang province in China, down in Beijing now. Yeah, Lee also has a special story. He is from the Xinjiang region, but he's Han Chinese. He said growing up, Han Ch ethnically Han Chinese in Xinjiang created a lot of problems for him. He got into a lot of fights. And ever since he was a kid, he was trying to toughen up. Fighting was just a natural, a natural option for him. He misses Xinjiang. I was talking to him the other day. He misses the meat there. Can't get the meat in Beijing that he likes. And the girls. He's been down in Beijing for almost three years now. And I bet he wishes that he was home in Xinjiang now. And Rossini is doing a great job of keeping that back control. Rossini, a very cerebral fighter, training to be a school teacher in his final year now. That's why he's got the nickname the Jedi. Hoping to teach Lee a lesson in the art of ground and pound right now. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. That looks nasty. A minute and a half left of this first round, and it seems like it's been an eternity already for Lee. Look at Lee holding on. He doesn't even care. He's saying, I, mean, I could hang out here all day. I think he's thinking of that meet in Xinjiang, mate. Oh, manager for China Top Team telling Lee, please. Don't sit up, don't sit up. He's trying, he's, he's su suggesting that he slides on his shoulders onto the back. Such a compelling three minutes of action all down in this corner. Hasn't moved an inch really, but. Oh, 
Oh, no, that's the body triangle. Lee told me in the interview that's something he was really worried about is Rossini's body triangle, which he's got locked up now. And yeah, he's showing some technical now here, the Australian. Well, six seconds. Good news for Lee. He's only got to survive another 22 seconds. Yeah. This has been a storming round from the Australian. The crowd counting it down for the Chinese fighter. Lee has done a tremendous job defending the attacks from the more technical grappler, Rossini. And this is the joy of MMA. We've seen it standing up in the previous fight. And this was great horizontal action from both athletes as we end round one with the Australian with the dominant hand as we take a look at some of the replays here of the opening action. That flying kick very reminiscent of Kim Hoon against Justin Murray in our LFC 3. There's the slam born. Yeah. And then it was all on the ground from then. Yeah, most of this round was spent in this terrible position for Lee with Rossini a tight back control. Look at here with the body triangle. Lee doing a great job, however, of fighting off all the choke attempts. Good work, Lee. So Rossini had a fight last year against Ian Bone. Bone went on to be the rise champion and then got that title taken off him by Rodney McSwain. And we'll see Rodney McSwain later on tonight. He takes on Kim Hoon in the welterweight 170 pound division. The crowd loves it. The crowd loves it. These guys are putting on a great show and the crowd responds enthusiastically. Very knowledgeable crowd in Hong Kong. Home of a lot of martial arts. A lot of these fighters have been influenced by Bruce Lee, of course. Oh, and they're off. They're out of the ring. It's the danger of having one of these orthodox rings and not a cage. But they've got lots of helpers on the side on the apron there to make sure that everybody's safe. And we restart it on the feet, middle of the ring now. Well, Mike, you must have spotted Rossini's strategy. Get in quickly, take it to the ground. He's done a terrific job of it in the first round, and he's doing a good job here in the second. Oh, and loading. And Rossini again. Oh. Lee going for the choke now. Really putting some urge in there on his neck. Locking up a guillotine choke. You can finish here from you can finish it here from the half guard. Lee really enjoying the fresh air and get unloading with some great punches. That and looks tight. Rossini. That looks tight. Can Rossini survive? Oh, and he's unconscious. He's unconscious. Rossini has smoked and chokes Lee. What an upset. The grappler puts, sorry, I'm sorry, the striker puts the grappler to sleep. Here comes the doctor. Well, didn't the tables turn between the first and second round? Wow. And Rossini, the Australian, choked and smoked by the Chinese fighter. And the crowd on their feet. Well, we always wondered, we saw him in earlier fights in LFC, and he has this nickname, The Leech, and he looks like a striker. Now, there yeah. he's proven what he can do when he gets on the ground. Suck the blood out of your brain. <laughs> so, the China top team are victorious here with this clash. Let's take a look at some of the action of this fight, because it only lasted six or seven minutes, but what a great fight. Look at these replays. Lee getting a, a great chance to unload on some strikes. Rossini shoots the double leg. Lee flips him over, locks up that guillotine, jumps in the half guard. He's already tied it up. Got the half, got the half guard here. Rossini slowly, slowly, slowly. You can see now his arms go limp and he's out. And that's why they call him the leech. Lee Jingliang. What a comeback. So Rossini up on his feet, 
Doesn't look like any damage there long term. But wow, five minutes of pain for Lee there. But he certainly came back with a rush in round two. Let's cross now for confirmation of the result. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Thomas Mann has called a stop to this contest at 1 minute 11 seconds of the second round. Penguin Thomas Mann is the second round of the second round. He is going to end the second round. He is going to end the second round. He is going to end the second round. For the winner by submission due to a guillotine, Lee Jing Lian! So does Rossini have any right to feel disappointed in his loss here, Vaughn? Well, it is a bit disappointing. I'm sure he's disappointed. But, you know, he's a tremendous fighter. He put on a great show. He got caught in the end. But you can expect to see him back at Legends. He's a great fighter.